Good morning from Trinity Episcopal Church in Boonville. We hope you'll enjoy our spiritual offering of music and the sermon of Mother Linda Logan for the 24th Sunday after Pentecost. There's going to be a great day. There's going to be a great day. We're going to dance and shout and sing. We're going to bow down to the king. There's going to be a great day coming soon. There's going to be a great day. There's going to be a great day. We're going to join the heavenly band. We're going to shout and clap our hands. There's going to be a great day coming soon. Sunday of the church year. Next Sunday is the first Sunday of Advent, the season of hope and preparation for the coming of Christ. It's also the season of hope and preparation for the coming of Christmas. But the reason we celebrate Christmas is that the person who is at the center of it puts a human face on God. Christmas is about Santa and giving gifts. It is about baking cookies and putting up trees and lights. It is about singing all the carols and Handel's Messiah. But it is about these things because they weave a circle about our days that draws us into the center of it all, and that center is Christ. So on this last Sunday of the year, before we head full tilt into all the traditions of Christmas, we pause and take a look at who it is we are celebrating. Now, in the Wright 13 program in Boonville, that is, the middle school group that is part of the Journey to Adulthood program, one of the first activities we do every year was pour through the pages of the Oxford Illustrated History of Christianity and Thomas Matthews' book, The Clash of Gods, a reinterpretation of early Christian art. We'd turn the pages of those books and take in the different ways that Christ and God have been painted or sculpted or worked in the little colored stones of mosaic pictures. And one of the things we'd notice is that Christ is shown with black skin, with slanted eyes, in the dress of people in Hindu and Muslim cultures, not just with the white skin, red flowing hair, 
and Greek robes of Western European art. People have always pictured Christ within the context of their own culture. That is because his embrace is for all people everywhere. But what the right Thirteeners would also discover is that there are certain standard ways of depicting him. The earliest was as a shepherd with a sheep draped over his shoulders. That image has been found in very early Christian tombs, as early as the second or third century. Now, there is nothing in Scripture that tells us what Jesus looked like. We do know that he didn't literally tend sheep. His work was preaching and teaching and healing people. But Jesus was represented as a shepherd because in Scripture, God is talked about as a shepherd. And that fit the culture that produced the Scriptures. Many of the significant figures in the Hebrew Scriptures were persons whose livelihoods were tied up with flocks of sheep. Think of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, and David. Sheep were the most important domestic animals in Palestine, for they were the source of meat, milk, fat, wool, skins, and horns, as well as being a major sacrificial animal. And they required a lot of care. Sheep become lost easily, and once lost, they are defenseless. They are also, according to one commentary, highly gregarious, fond of the company of others. So the shepherd's work was endless, leading the sheep to food and water, and returning them to the safety of the fold. In such a context, it was natural to speak about the leaders of the people as shepherds, and to use the customs of shepherds as images to illustrate spiritual principles. The leaders of the people of Israel were supposed to shepherd the people. When they failed to do so, God, through the prophets, said that God himself would gather the people and bring them back into the fold, and that God would raise up shepherds who would shepherd the people. The days are surely coming, God says, when I will raise up a righteous branch and he shall reign as king and deal wisely and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. And there in that statement, as the prophet Jeremiah presents it, is God's definition of king the one who shall guide the people into living with justice and righteousness, that is, living in ways that establish justice and righteousness, making life fair and right and good for everyone. So when Jesus comes along and reaches out to all the outcasts in society, telling them and demonstrating to them their equality, even their blessedness in the eyes of God. When he comes along telling people that how they treat each other, how they help each other, is what is most important 
in the eyes of God. His words and presence heal people's hearts and minds, giving them a new lease on life. And people, looking back on all of this after he had died, but as his presence was continuing to be experienced among them, people realized that God had sent them that king, that God had sent them that shepherd who would guide them into living with justice and righteousness. So we call Jesus king, and we call him shepherd. And both of those terms, both of those images, also work to present him as Savior. That is the main title that we give him, Savior. And today's reading from Luke shows him in this capacity, even as he is dying on the cross. Taunted to save himself, he instead focuses on others. And if we look to him to save us, it is his line of focus that we need to follow. The writer of the letter to the Colossians says that God has transferred us into the kingdom of his Son. If we are in that kingdom, we live according to its principles. We live reaching out to give life to others. This is what a me and Jesus form of piety doesn't get. Our relationship with Christ isn't just between ourselves and Jesus. It is wrapped up in our relationship with other people, especially those we consider different from ourselves and would rather ignore. King, Shepherd, and Savior are who we say Jesus is. But we need to keep in mind that none of these images speak to persons outside the church. None of them convey who he is outside the context of scriptural tradition. That is, unless their meaning is conveyed by the people who apply these terms to Jesus, unless they ascribe these terms to him by the way they themselves live. Sweet Lord, 
this sweet day. It's coming, yes, it's coming for to carry me home. My day is coming as sure as can be. Coming for to carry me, carry me home. I hear a band of angels calling out for me. Listening to a spiritual offering from Trinity Episcopal Church, located on Schuyler Street in Boonville. We're glad to be part of your day, and we invite you to join us in person for our weekly service at 9 o'clock Sunday mornings.